Welcome new and old friends. My name is 242, and today, two got us five true scary stories. So, turn off your lights, make sure your doors and windows are locked. Things are about to get spooky. Chris smiled as he slid on the horrible mask and stared at himself in the mirror. His smile suddenly faded when he saw his lips move and heard a hideous voice rasp, Ah, your skin feels just right. I think I'll keep it. A man tried to ding-dong ditch to get me to open the door and presumably rob me. By Power Pack M. This happened about 10 years ago. I've been on the subreddit for a while and only just remembered that this happened to me and is a relevant story. So at this time, I'm a 14 male and I'm enrolled in high school. My mom worked at a nearby apartment complex as a manager, so she picked me up at school at 2.40 and bring me home instead of riding the bus for hours. The day is completely normal so far. She picks me up from school and brings me home. Not more than 10 minutes after I'm home, a black car pulls up in the driveway and I hear a hard knock on the door. I look through the glass on the front door and I can clearly see a man wearing a hoodie in the summer lying on the ground in front of my door. I guess he assumes that he was completely obscured because my mom had a wreath on the door and the space between the window and the bottom of the door was wide enough that someone could probably assume I couldn't see them. Well, I saw him. I ran and grabbed the house phone and called the police from the kitchen where I could see the car. I had a machete, teenager that thought swords and stuff were cool. Don't judge me and weighed around the corner of the door while still on the phone with the police. At this point, the man knocks again. So, I took matters into my own hands. I yell as loud as I could, Leave now or I'll fucking kill you. I had a pretty deep voice for my age. Thank you, early puberty. So, I guess he thought I was a full-grown man because this man got up and hurled ass like an Olympic sprinter. So about three minutes or so pass and the police get to my house. We had no cameras or anything, so there's really nothing to go off of to pursue this person. The cops pretty much just tell me that I handled the situation well and the laws about self-defense. The man never returned and that's the end of my let's not meet story. I've looked back at this a lot over the years, and this man almost certainly wanted to rob us. What's most creepy about this to me is that he most likely scoped us out, saw that we were just a teenage boy and a single mother, went through the trouble of learning our routines, and waited for what he thought was the ideal moment to rob us. We bought a handgun because of this so I never really lost any sleep over this because I knew if he came back that I had a surprise for him too. Shitty burglar, let's not meet. Something with my face is stalking me, please send help. It was a text I just received from my brother, dated five days earlier. I thought about how he had just said at dinner an hour earlier that his camping trip had been totally uneventful. I'm pretty sure the staff at Hobby Lobby saved my life today. Bye, Anonymous. I'm still shaking as I think about where I could have been right now had I not acted on a vibe today in Hobby Lobby. I was in the store to indulge in the springtime sale. 
As I was browsing the entire store, I noticed that I kept seeing the same man wandering around. I thought he was with his wife until I realized that he was there alone. I also noticed that he had a Bluetooth headset in his ear the entire time. Not necessarily suspicious in of itself, but I really started to get a bad feeling when he followed me around the small floral section as I weaved through the aisles. He kept looking at random flowers when I would look at him. I even saw him either quietly talking to himself or talking to someone on the Bluetooth, most likely the latter. I circled the store several times to make sure that he was genuinely following me and to wait for him to leave before I went to check out. After a while of not being able to see him around me, I went up to the front and got in line. He crept from around a corner and got in line right behind me, still holding two random flowers that he had picked up. The cashier rung up my item while I typed a note on my phone. I told her that I had an online coupon and showed her the note that said, The guy behind me has been following me throughout the store. She said that she was going to have to get her manager to verify the coupon. The manager came up and read my note and said, With the other sale already applied, we might not be able to apply this coupon. But let's step aside and see what we can do. She took me past the register to get the details while the cashier rung up the man. I told her everything, and I look back and this guy is telling the cashier that he forgot something that he wanted. He then goes back to the floral section to add another random ass stem to his items. He looks back at me talking to the manager and tells the cashier that he needs something else and leaves the register again to go get another random item. It was at this point that I knew that he was stalling to wait for me. The manager picks up on this too and calls up a male staff member to go out to the parking lot to make sure the man got into his car and drove away. The man paid for his four random flowers and left the store. The staff member came back in and verified that he drove away, and offered to be in the parking lot until I safely drove away as well. He came out with me and pretended to grab carts until I had safely made it to my car and left. I'm so thankful to the staff that immediately jumped into discreet action to ensure my safety. By the fourth or so victim, my carving became quite legible enough to be read. Why still do they let their children wander into my forest? Snowboarding Accident by Sonora One day at work. Me and a couple co-workers were lounging lazily outside, smoking on a break. One of my younger co-workers told us a story that his dad told him, as it had happened in the recent last couple of years. He explained that his father did some type of work involving checking and diagnosing power lines for problems with electricity. At the time, he was working at a popular ski resort, just a little ways up the hill, out of our small, historic town. On the evening of the incident, one of the ski lifts was out of order, so he was called at near dark to check and follow the power line to find the problem. So he set out equipment with a flashlight to go and check it out. After he checked a couple of poles and followed the lines, he sat down for a break before continuing. Once finished, he switched on his flashlight in order to see through the falling snow and darkness. In the snow-bound silence, he made his way to the next pole, following the nearly invisible power line against the black sky. As he approached the next pole, he noticed an odd shadow behind it dancing in the swaying beam of his flashlight. At first, 
He really wasn't sure what it could possibly be. But as he got closer, he began to get a feeling of dread in the pit of his stomach. The feeling grew as he started to realize that he was seeing a pair of legs, sticking straight up out of the snow at the base of the power pole. One leg was still attached to a snowboard, while the other leg was free of the board and bent at an angle. Nothing moved. There was only the stillness and silence of the snow slowly falling around him. He wondered for a few seconds what or if there was something he could do to help the victim. He decided to run up to the site and try to save the victim by digging them out by hand. He dug and dug furiously and panicked, only to realize as he dug down enough to expose half the body that he was much too late to save them. He was not sure how long he just sat and cried, helpless to save them. Eventually, he got up and went to inform the necessary people of his grisly discovery. But the staff had already known whom he had found. Apparently, earlier that day, a family had reported their daughter missing to the ski resort staff after she had left the group to catch the ski lift up to board back down. When she had failed to return after a couple of hours, they started to worry. And that worry turned to terror after over eight hours had passed. What had happened was that on her way down the hill while snowboarding, she most likely noticed the power pole a little late. And trying to stop, she fell face first into a tree hollow hole that had formed at the base of the power pole. Unable to dig herself out from being upside down, she eventually suffocated. She had managed to yank one foot loose from the binding on the snowboard in her desperation to free herself. For a long time after seeing that, his dad had occasional nightmares, but he says that what really stuck with him was that overwhelming feeling of powerlessness. He really wanted to save her. That was the most terrifying part to me. I wish my cats weren't such picky eaters. I'll never get rid of this damn body at this rate. I think my TA was a predator. By Nostalgia this TA, or teacher's assistant, was in my GCSE maths and science class. I'm not saying his name for privacy reasons, and he will most likely know that I wrote it if he happens to come across this post, which I doubt. Pretty much every female student in my year found this TA attractive. He was young, maybe early 20s, I also found him attractive. At first, it was the usual TA help stuff. I was very chatty. Of course, I found him attractive. Like most teen girls do when they find a teacher fit, they sort of act up and try to impress them, you know? It only started to get weird when the odd off-topic conversation happened. The first odd thing was when our hair color came up in our conversation during math class. He thought I said that my hair was black, and he said, Your hair isn't black, it's brown. And I said, No, your hair is black, not mine. Then he said something like, See, my girlfriend always says my hair is brown when it isn't. She is such a bitch. Something like that. I can't quite remember. Red flag. Talking about your girlfriend and swearing as a TA. Then another day in math class, a classmate blurred what I said aloud. 
Oh my god, Opie just said that all the TAs are so fit. And the TA went red and just said something like, Oh my, OP. Another occasion, my friend who was in the science class pointed out how weird our TA was being. This was physics class. My physics teacher had all of us sitting around a table to show us a project. The TA was staying between me and a classmate. My friend was on the other side. I don't really recall how it happened or whatever. I don't think the TA even realized until I moved my hand after about 30 seconds. He was sort of fiddling with my hand and arm. After class, my friend said, Rah, usual teen slang at the time. Did you see how Sir was touching you? Another time in math class, the TA randomly came up to me and said, You look better without makeup. And I said, I'm not wearing makeup? And he said, Yeah, you look better without it. Then towards the end of year 10, I found out he was transferring to another school. I said, Why are you leaving? You're my favorite TA. And he said, I will probably come back when you're in your sixth form. He didn't come in for the last two weeks. Then on the last day of year 10, non-school uniform day, I see him and say, Oh, what are you doing back here? He said, I came to see you. And I said, Oh. This was when I was lining up for English. Then at the end, I was coming down the stairs and exiting the building, and he was staying there with one of my friends talking to him. He saw me and I said bye. I said other things too, but I don't remember. The only thing I can recall is that he went for a hug and I gave a spud. Then he said, I was going in for a hug. And he laughed, and I just said, oh, and laughed. Then said goodbye and just left. There are many other strange things that happen between us. However, there are too many to write. These are just the worst and oddest of them. Never saw him since. I'm now at college, and I realize how creepy this is to me, and was at the time. I used to believe I was in love with this grown man. I still think he's so attractive, but I've thrown off by how he used to talk to me when I was just 14 years old. I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do, the doctor said to me while he turned off the machine. As my lungs began to fail, and my vision go black, the doctor left and added, there's just been a shortage of organ donors. The Vanishing Man by Project 626 My friend, 17 female, and I, also 17 female, went for our usual late night slushy run. We usually alternate who drives and who pays so it's fair. And on this night, it was my turn to drive. After we got our slushies, my friend Ashley suggested we go to the park she frequently goes to and swing on the swings. Because it was late at night, we purposely sat facing opposite ways on the swing so that we could see our surroundings. I was facing the hill that went down into the neighborhoods below the playground, and she was facing the street where I had parked. We talked about school and drama and everything that had been going on in our lives, when I noticed Ashley had stopped paying attention to what I was saying. Ashley was staring at my car when she whispered, Do you see that too, or am I crazy? I felt my heart drop as I stared into the direction she was looking, directly at my car. Ashley, stop it. This isn't fucking funny. Shh. Look from where I'm sitting. 
I slowly rose from my swing and crouched behind her. I'm taller than her so I can still see over her head, while also appearing as though I'm sitting to whatever she thought she saw. I looked at my car and whispered, Ashley, I'm serious, this isn't... And that's when I saw it. I held my breath to stay as still as I possibly could. It was so easy to miss. Behind the driver's window of my car was a crouched figure. At first, I had figured it was the headrest of my seat, until I saw the crouched figure move. It looked as if it was moving back and forth between the driver's side window and my back seat window to look at us. You see it too, don't you? Ashley whispered, neither of us taking our eyes off of it. Still convinced it was a trick of the eye from the streetlight, I looked to the bottom of my car to see if I could see any feet underneath, when I noticed the shadows swallowed the bottom of my car. I glanced back to the top, and that's when I felt my racing heart dropped. I could see the top of its head from over the top of my car, the streetlight illuminating it. We need to get out of here, I whispered to Ashley. Where are we going to go? It's at your car, Ashley questioned, both of us trying to act natural in case it hadn't noticed us looking at it. I don't care anywhere but here, I said as I gathered our things and started walking quickly along a path near the swing set. Ashley followed, asking what my plan was as I called one of my male friends. I had gone into full-blown survival mode. The path we were on winded around the playground and led back into the sidewalk along the side of the street where my car was parked. My male friend hadn't answered, so I scratched my plan to pretend he was my boyfriend on the phone in an attempt to freak the figure out. Dumb, I know, but I didn't exactly have a lot to work with. I continued walking without having a plan, but prepared for a fight. As I walked along the path, we realized that another car had pulled in behind mine. Nobody had gone out, but their lights were still on, illuminating my car. As we ran out of the playground, we were able to look at my car while still being a good distance away. We saw that there was nobody there. I looked under my car, which was now visible from the other car's lights, and made sure no one was hiding under my car before turning to Ashley and simply stating, Get in the car now! We booked it to my car, and I pulled into the street before either of us were buckled. We didn't say anything until we made sure the car that was behind us wasn't following us. I still get nervous going to that park, despite it being in a really good neighborhood. I always tell a friend if I go there. Ashley and I agree that the figure we saw was no trick of the eye, but we can't find an explanation as to how it vanished before our eyes. We have two theories as to how they got away without either of us seeing. 1. They snuck around the side of the car as we were around the corner, meaning they hid perfectly while moving at a quick enough speed that they could escape before we got there, and booked it. Or 2. They got into the car that pulled up behind us before we even noticed the car which I personally think is more likely. When we got to Ashley's house, we checked my car to make sure they hadn't marked my car in any way for any sort of tracking. When we found nothing, I drove home and notified Ashley when I made it home safely. I can't help but feel like the car that had just suddenly appeared behind mine was somehow involved. Either a getaway car or someone who noticed someone staring at us, using their light to scare them away. 
To this day, we still have no solid explanation to what happened that night. But Ashley and I frequently encountered creepy strangers when we were together. This was definitely the scariest encounter I've had. My mother always told me that you can achieve anything if you persist at it. I couldn't help but feel proud while listening to her screams as I managed to cut off all of her skin without drawing any blood. And with that, we're coming to the end of this video, True Scary Stories Volume 8. I'd like to give a special thanks to all the writers who let me read your stories. Each one of them gave me a really good chill, and if you agree, hit that like button and make sure it feels it. If you're new, subscribe and turn that pretty little bell to all notifications. If you'd like to help this channel slash podcast, just share it with anyone who you might think enjoys it. You'd be surprised how much that helps. If you'd like to help in other ways, I have a Patreon where for a dollar a month you get early access to the audio. I also have PayPal if you just like to give a donation once. And I also have merch where you can wear these cute little avatars if you like. All the links are on my website, which the link to that is in the show notes slash description box. Now, I would love for a comment, but I gotta get you that Sunday word first. On screen right now and on Twitter is everyone who left me a comment using that word last week. Thank you, every single one of you. Now this Sunday word is problem, which means a matter or situation regarded as unwelcome or harmful and needing to be dealt with and overcome. So as always guys, write me a comment down below with this word or on Twitter and you'll be on next week's photo. But as always guys, thank you for watching and listening. It really means the world to me. Sleep tight and don't let 42 bite.